There we go. So, hopefully you guys already know about Wallet Connect because I've shouted enough times at many conferences. And, but Wallet Connect is an open protocol for connecting wallets and apps. And it's nothing too complicated. It's just a QR code instead of connecting to a browser extension. And it basically just came to the conclusion of browser extensions are not the best way of interacting. And there's so many good mobile wallets. If we could just like connect it really easily, but with all wallets, because Uport Connect has existed for three years, but it only works with Uport Connect and Uport app. And now we have Wallet Connect, which is a standard that anyone can integrate. You can just go to the quick start. You have examples for dApps and wallets and integrated right now. And there's Wallet, there's Tokenary, there's Trust Wallet. MetaMask is also going to release with Wallet Connect support. Rainbow, Balance, and I think that's it. We have six wallets so far. So there has been some good developments. So for example, I released uh, WebTree Connect, which is um, basically an extension for dApps to have both support for MetaMask and Wall Connect with a simple UI that immediately will connect. And Trust Wallet recently supported uh, with Binance Dex, which was a big win for us, which is provided a lot of developers came to, to the community. And Unisox also released which is pretty cool. So you would be able to bid on the Unisox with Wallet Connect. MetaMask presented at Ethereum. And even Bruno from MetaMask also did a, a demo where he used Connext, which is a state channel a platform for paying with Wallet Connect, which is pretty cool. Also recently, someone tweeted about how they access the Binance Dex on a Tesla with Wallet Connect. So there has been some quite interesting developments. And it's pretty cool because like this very simple UI that just allows you to build so many experiences. You just have a QR code anywhere. So it could be in a Tesla, it could be in a tablet, and you get these messages sent across between the dApp and the wallet. And it's all secure because the private keys are never shared. So you're able to have a loot box like Lee has built to open with your wallet, and you're verifying that you are who you are, and you can always control the session at all times. So what I'm building is called Wallet Connect Pay, which is basically I want all of these wallets to kind of explore the outside world. And for example, this bar and other bars and many other bars to have the experience of buying drinks with Wallet Connect. This is a UI that I've built that provides a simple enough user interface to create an order where you can add or remove and you have an order. And you can create different shops. So for example, I have two different shops. This is a coffee shop. And this one is in dollars. This one is euros. It can support multiple chains. The UI doesn't even reflect any of this. It's only when you actually pay that you encounter anything blockchain related. So you, I'm going to get a mate and a cola. When, when I get to pay, I get to the Wallet Connect screen. So you pick your favorite wallet that supports Wallet Connect. For example, I'm going to use Rainbow and just get the QR code. And once you scan the QR code, you will initiate a session and immediately be requested to, to connect or to a different chain or have a transaction. In this scenario, Rainbow doesn't have XDI chain. But if you had Wallet, you could just switch to XDI chain and you would be able to pay. In the future, you'd be able to switch between chains and depending on the permissions that the vendor would have. So for example, if the vendor would support XDI chain you, and Ethereum, you could use both of them. If it supported any other chain, as long as it's EVM chain, it should be fine. So I'm going to try with the coffee shop. So I get an espresso and maybe a croissant. I get to the payment. I scan the QR code. And I get a simple interaction, which says, with the converted rate, which you can see here, 750, and here says 748, given the exchange rate of DAI. And I can just sign it from my phone. And now the transaction is pending. And once it's confirmed, you'll have your order. And basically, this is just a prototype that I'm building, which is trying to provide a much better use case for just dApps, trying to get like some utility to having, because a lot of what I've experienced, even in the crypto community, is that people don't have mobile wallets. And even if they do, they don't actually have value on them, because they, there's not many use cases. First of all, like we didn't have dApps interacting with mobile wallets. If you had Trust Wallet or Cypher, you had the dApp browser. That was a good enough use case. But it was still not good enough to make 
for a daily use case where you hold like 50 to 100 dollars on your phone. But if you were able to just pay lunch and drinks after work, this would be a good experience. The problem is, this is the blockchain. And this is one of the things I want to improve, which is, can we integrate Wall Connect with state channels? And this is something we're still working on, which is providing better standards. Because Wall Connect, one of the problems is that, like I said, it's an open protocol between wallets and dApps. Yet, as the protocol developer, I have no control either on the wallet or the dApp development. That's why I'm so passionate about the IPs and standards, because it's, it provides me like a coordination tool between dApps and wallets, so that I can tell wallets to follow the EIP 1328 and go to dApps and say the same. And now we can coordinate between multiple wallets and dApps to communicate with each other. And one of the things that I'm currently uh, pushing for is the 2015, which is Yeah. Uh, come on. Basically, it just provides. Wow, that's terrible. <laughs> there we go. So basically, even if you connect with Wall Connect or MetaMask, it would be great to have the ability to update the chain to a different chain. So in this scenario where we had the. Um, where we had the, the point where it requested me to connect to a different chain, it would be much better experience as a user if I scan my QR code. And instead of having a transaction request, I would have the vendor is asking you to change chain. And the only thing it would require is for dApps and wallets to support a very simple request where they provide the enough information to switch to any chain. And here I describe how you could potentially uh, integrate this. This is a proposal so far. It's still in draft. But also, it provides a list of best practices where the wallet, if it knows the Gorley interface, it wouldn't actually require all of that information. As long as you have the chain ID, the network ID, you'd be able to switch to any chain very easily and provide a simple UI. So a lot of this stuff that it's like part of the wallet connect is about the intercommunication between the two devices, but not necessarily what they actually communicate. And that's where EIPs really come forward because provides a much better user experience for users if we all have better standards to interoperate with each other. So yeah, I hope like one day this interface for with Wallet Connect Pay becomes very common and we can easily just buy a muffin and coffee or a mate and we all use our Wallet Connect wallets to pay for lunch. Thanks. Oh. Questions? <laughs> Forgot about that. Who has a question? Will Wallet Connect support Polkadot? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, for example, um, when it came to Binance Dex, Binance Dex is, a, is technically a Cosmo chain, well, technically a Tendermint chain. But what they did was basically they created this, uh, an interface using JSON RPC. All the communications between Wallet Connect are JSON RPC calls. So they just created a BNB namespace JSON RPC calls for all their ordering, matching, and whatever. So you can sign all of these transactions on, on, Wallet, on, on Trust Wallet because they supported these calls. So if you have a Wallet Connect enabled wallet, doesn't mean you can actually uh, sign messages from the Binance Dex. It just means that you can interoperate between the two. So, can it support Polkadot? If they provide an interface in JSON RPC and the wallets then follow that interface, yes. Yeah. So, um, maybe what 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 information is actually encoded in the QR code? Good question. Let's get into the technicals then. <laughs> So basically, here it is. There's a topic. There's an initial topic for the request. There's the bridge URL and a key to encrypting the messages. You, you post a session request, which includes a peer ID, which is going to be used to send messages to the app, and peer meta, which is scraped from the web page using like an icon, description, a title, a URL. So it basically provides you the same interface as you would get with the MetaMask pop-up that says, do you want to connect to this website? And you would get the same thing on mobile. 
it passes to the bridge server. And the bridge server is a WebSocket uh, server, which has caching, that waits until at least one of the parties requests for one of these topics. When you display the QR code, you display the topic, and the wallet is then able to get the session request using that topic, and is able to decrypt it with the key. So you basically just have the minimum information to that, get that session request. Once you have the session request, you basically just interchange uh, messages that are encrypted using that key, and they all have a topic and a payload. Uh, why would the wallet need to know which chain uh, the DAP is on? It could just sign the transaction and send the signed raw transaction back to the DAP. That's actually not correct. <laughs> actually, it's part of the EIP 1155, which is, provides the simple replay attack transaction, which basically the V field on the signature actually contains the chain ID. As you can see, chain ID plus 2 plus 35. So basically, you need the chain ID to sign transactions and in the future type, type data messages. The same way we track the network ID, we need to track the chain ID to sign the messages. Actually, we shouldn't even track the network ID. It's pointless. It, it's just the same. It's a coincidence. Anyway, don't get in that. <laughs> Yeah, but it could be done like Parity Signer, where you just provide the, the wallet is only doing the signing of the raw transaction. But the, the wallet, but so what you're discussing is not whether you have the chain ID, it's whether who decides on the chain ID. So with the Parity Signer, you're providing the chain ID from the DAP into the wallet, instead of having the wallet to the DAP. The reason I did it in this way was to keep the wallet as in control of the session, so just like with MetaMask and other wallets, they decide which chain is the active one, and then they would provide the, that information to the DAP. With the EIP 2015, you would be able to request this change instead of forcing this change. Theoretically, with Wallet Connect, you could force this change, but this would be the wallet developer that would actually. OK, so thank you so much, Pedro. Awesome. Thanks, guys.